Hello everybody and welcome to ispeakspokespoken.com. My name is Dan and I'm your teacher for today. Now I've been teaching for a long time, 25 years in fact, and because of that I'm going to be able to help you with all your English needs. Now today we're going to look at some very common mistakes made in English using is and are. Now people make these mistakes all the time and they make them because sometimes it's quite difficult to actually work out which one to use, even for native speakers. So we're going to go through and we're going to give you just simple rules, basically simple rules on how to do it. So understanding singular and plural. So singular and plural is one of the main reasons why we would use is or are. Now this is the simple way. This is the, the simplest part of this lesson. Um, so we're going to have a look at this, understand that, and then we're going to move on to the exceptions or the, the, the rules that might change a little bit. So, is is used for singular subjects. So, the cat is sleeping. One cat, the cat is sleeping. She is reading a book, or he is reading a book. Okay? So, this is just one person doing something. Okay? Um, so, when we want to use are, it's because there's a plural subject. So, for example, the cats are sleeping or they are reading books, okay, so more than one person. They are, the cats are sleeping, they are reading books. There are other reasons and ways we use are, but we won't talk about it today. We're going to stick with this so you know the basic rules. Okay, so um, this is kind of nice and easy. So plural is are, singular is. It's kind of a nice way to remember things like this, okay? Now, how do things change and when do things get a little bit confusing? Collective nouns are, are terms that are actually a collective, a collective word for many things. So, um, for example, we've got uh, the use of the word team here. So a team is a group of people, okay? Like a group as well. So they actually are used in a singular form, okay? So we would say, for example, the team is winning. So the team is winning, the team as one thing, okay? So that's when we would use is. We would say, well, well there might be more and more, more than one people in the team, but actually in this situation, we would say the team is winning as one whole, as one thing, okay? Now, it does change depending on context because what about if we're referring to the team as people? So we might say the team is winning as a thing, my team, my favorite team, but then we might say the team are celebrating, so this is when we're referring to the team as a group of people and therefore in our minds it becomes a plural. So the team are celebrating, the team is winning. Team as a whole, the team are celebrating as a group of people. Okay, so this is when it can get a little bit confusing. We just have to think about the context. Okay, so um, just let's have a look at this word celebrating. We start with the, the strength at the beginning. Cele, celebrate, celebrate, celebrating. Um, it's actually a word that most people get correct or you say correctly when they're speaking English because actually it's very similar in many languages. Okay, so here are a few more examples of these collective nouns and how they might be used in different contexts. So the family is traveling to Spain. The family as a unit. Okay, the family is traveling. Family is traveling. Okay, how about we talk about it in another context. The family are having different opinions. This is when we can see them, the family, as a group of people, as a, as a plural. So the family are having different opinions. Now this also, this part of the sentence gives us this, this suggestion as to where the context is. Let's have a look at another one just to see how we can, we can see the, the example here. So the committee is making a decision. Committee as a whole, as one thing, one entity. The committee are discussing their options, okay? So the committee are discussing their, their options. This part of the sentence suggests that this is a plural. And when it's a plural, we use are. Now, a lot of this is actually just about feeling the sentence. Now, feeling if it's correct or not, if it sounds right, if it feels right. When we're using, all you have to remember is when you're using this, is that collective noun as a unit or is it, are we using it to talk about a collection of people that we are referring to as individuals, okay? Now, if we're, if we're referring to them as individuals, 
like the family are having different opinions within the family, then this is when we use are. And actually it's not as difficult as it sounds because you can have a practice and we will practice on the next few slides. Okay, so we have subjects also joined by and. So when something's joined by and, what do we use? Do we use is or do we use are? Well, there are two different ways. So when you use two singular nouns that are joined by and or are, you will actually say are because you have two different people. So, so John and Mary are coming to the party, okay? Because it makes two people. So one, two, making it plural, are. John and Mary are coming. The dog and the cat are playing. Dog and cat making two, so plural, are playing together. Together, together, here we are, t. This is the, the schwa sound here, okay? Together, and again here. Okay, so when you have these two, two together, it becomes a plural. So for example, my brother and sister are studying, all right? Nice and simple. When something becomes a list, it becomes plural, okay? Now, when we move on to the next slide, you'll see why we need to think about this. Okay, so now we're going to look at subjects that are joined by or or nor. So if it's, if it's an addition or if it's kind of an, a, a negative addition. Um, so when they're joined by or or nor, the verb agrees with the nearest subject. So that's something we're going to look at. Um, for example, first one here, either the cat or the dog or the dogs are outside. Now, let me just explain to you before we carry on why we always pick up on these pronunciation points. And it's because we've chosen words that we find either important for this lesson or that are longer and are more difficult to pronounce because getting the pronunciation right of words is a great way to actually get your English up to a higher level. Now, many English words have many different uh, syllables and the pronunciation or the, the stress will fall on different syllables within each word. So we need to make sure that you get that right. So if you stress in the correct place, your pronunciation of that word is a lot better than it would be if you don't. So getting the, the right syllable stressed and having the right vowel sound will pretty much guarantee that you can say the word absolutely perfectly. So this is why we always kind of tell you about where the stress is and what the sounds are and when to use the schwa, this uh sound, this, this sound here, because it's kind of important, this uh. It's a very, very important word in, in sound in English and it's used all the time. But, you know, sometimes it replaces things that it, it, you don't need to say. For example, you don't need to say better, you can just say better. And it sounds a lot better, it sounds a lot more, more, more natural. Okay, so let's go on. So either the cat or the dogs are outside. So dogs is the plural form, which is why we have the R after. So either the cat or the dogs are outside. Okay, neither the boys nor the girl is ready. Okay, because the girl is actually the closest, the nearest subject to the is or the are. And if the girl is one, then it's is. So neither the boys nor the girl is ready. Okay. One more example, either the teacher or the students are late. Students plural, and we have the R here, okay? Um, and again, the word late, we have this A sound, late, okay? Uh, because sometimes people actually pronounce this E, so they say late, it's not correct. It has to be late, okay? Good, good. Uh, number four, neither the book nor the pens, plural, are useful, okay? Number five, either John or his friends are attending. Friends are, okay? So we've got this, uh, you see what's happening now. The one closest to where you're using your are or your is is the one that makes the difference. So neither my sister nor my parents, plural, are at home. Okay, is it clear? I think this is gonna be something that you can have to go back over. And remember all these things that we're doing today are possible to download from the I above. And also there's a link in the description under the video if you're on your mobile or a tablet. So indefinite pronouns, let's have a look at how that affects things. So some indefinite pronouns are always singular and take is, always. And this includes everyone, someone, and anyone, okay? Now these words, we always say everyone is, someone is, um, anyone is, okay? We never say are with these words. Okay, 
so even if it's everyone, because it's like a collective thing, it's like a collective thing. Um, so everyone is invited to the meeting. Everyone is invited to the meeting. Invited. So strength on the second, and we have invited. This part, id, the ed, is actually there are three different pronunciations. You can have d, t, or id, and in this sense, in this situation, it's id. Just remember, there are three different possibilities to the meeting. Someone is knocking at the door. Someone is knocking at the door. So someone, everyone, and anyone, always we use is. This is how it goes, okay? Okay, so let's have a look at some special cases because there are some special cases in, in the fact that the word looks like it's plural, but it's actually singular. Like the case with the word mathematics. Mathematics as a subject, is a singular form. So for example, mathematics is difficult for some students. That's why we would use the is. Mathematics, uh, the shortened version in British English is maths. So it sounds plural. Actually, the Americans have got it right by using, by calling it math, because at least then it doesn't make it feel like a plural. So math is difficult. Maths is difficult. Difficult thing to say as well. Mathematics is difficult for some students. So just remember that. Um, news. News is always a singular. So news is on at six o'clock or the news is on at six o'clock. Um, number three, physics. Physics is my favourite subject. Again, physics, mathematics, it kind of has the same, the same rule. Um, physics, just remember that the stress is on the first part. Physics. Physics is a nice word actually to say. It's my favourite, my favourite. That starts on the first part as well. So we have three three syllables on favourite. Um, actually, some people would argue there are two favourite favourite, but it's it depends it depends where you get your where you, where you are or, or who you're speaking to. Okay, so economics is interesting again another subject. So these subjects are often um, the ones that we we use this with. Um, again, like the previous slide, we have a, a word that actually has a, a secondary stress as well. So economics. Um, economics. Now it depends where you are. The the Americans I think say economics, but we say economics in, in English, British English. Well, I say it anyway. Um, so economics is interesting. So number five is the news is shocking. Um, it's similar to the news is on at six o'clock or news is on at six o'clock. News is. News is always like we said um, a singular. Politics again subject. Politics is complicated. Um, here we have, yeah, that we've already got it underlined, so complicated, complicated, and the stress goes here. Um, politics, politics. This is the schwa that we talked about before, this nice sound, uh, politics. Okay, um, so there are some nouns and plurals that take R, for example. So these are slightly different. These are things that are considered and we always use and think of as plural. And it's either to do with the history of the word or it's to do with how the word or the thing is constructed. For example, the trousers are too long. Trousers we always have as a plural because I guess it has two legs. So we call them a plural thing. We always use it. So the, the trousers are too long. The trousers, trousers. Uh, actually, this one can be a schwa, it can be errors. You can say it however you want, depends where you are. Trousers or trousers. Um, okay, the scissors are on the table. Scissors are made of two parts put together, so this is why we, we use them in a plural sense. Um, I know it doesn't always make sense completely, but it's just how we do it. Uh, I think it's to do with how these things used to be. They used to be separate parts. This is why people use them in plural. So these jeans are expensive. Jeans, again, related to trousers. Very simple. Jeans are, so are, are, and are. Uh, the glasses are broken. And again, if you look at my glasses, we have two glass pieces. Two glass pieces. So you have the piece here and the piece here together. And that's why we use them as a plural. So again, like scissors, like trousers, with, with two, two legs, we have two glasses. Because remember, back in time, maybe glasses were, were singular. So this is, this is one of the reasons. It's all about the history of the word. And the cattle are grazing in the field. Cattle is the, the plural form of, of uh, a group of cows or, or whatever. So this is why we use that. And the police are investigating the case. We always think of police as a team of people, as a group of people. Um, 
We often talk about the police with plural. We never say the police is, the police are, we always say. Because for us, and for most people around the world, the police is a collection of people who are helping. And there we, we always use a, a plural form for this. Okay, so let's have a look at some practice, shall we? Um, so let's have a go. You can practice these and we can go through them together and see if we can, we can come up with the right answers based on what we've done. Now remember, as I said before, everything we've got on the last few slides you can download on the i above and you can also find on the link in the description below the video if you're on a mobile or a tablet. You can do the quiz as well. So you'll be able to do this as well with the quiz, not only with us now. Now, so you can pause the video, you can have a look at what we're doing, you can go back, you can do however you wish, but just follow me for a minute and we'll try and do it together. So number one, the book on the table. What is the missing word? The book. Think about it, singular. Yes, the book is. The book is on the table. Number two, we have a plural here. My friends coming over tonight. Yes, it's are. My friends are coming over tonight. Okay, now remember the next part. We have neither the teacher nor the students, plural, closest to this one, in the classroom. So neither the teacher nor the students are in the classroom because the students is the closest to this verb. So that's why we use the plural form. So everyone excited about the trip remember what we were talking about the words like everyone anyone no one is okay always a singular everyone is excited about the trip okay remember the exceptions the news is the news is very surprising today remember those plural things glasses trousers so these trousers are very fashionable Okay, the cat and the dog together, two things, making plural, are sleeping on the couch. Okay, remember teams, the team. What situation would it be though? Is it the team as a whole or is it the team as individual people? It's the team as a whole. The team is winning the match, okay? So either the manager or the employees, plural, are responsible. Either the manager or the employees are responsible. Now, we'll come back to this one in a minute because I want to show you how we can change it. So each of these options, options here, what do you think? Is. Each of these options is valid. So several in the new project. Several is a word for three people, making it plural. Several are interested in the new project. Mathematics is that tricky one. It looks like a plural, but it's not. So mathematics is my favourite subject. Now, in the UK, we have uh, different uh, brands that we talk about, and we often talk about it as, an, as a possessive. So we might say, um, I'm going to a certain supermarket's place. And if you say, I'm going to a supermarket's place, you'll say, I'm going to the name of supermarket with plural. Now, if you do that, you sometimes maybe say, uh, the wrong thing. You maybe say are when you should be saying is because it feels like it's plural but it's not. So you can sometimes get tricked by this possessive s. Um, so let's have a go at going back to this one. So either the manager or the employees are responsible. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear everything here because I want to just show you something. If I make this employee, then what does it become? So either the manager or the employee is as soon as that becomes, as soon as this here becomes a, a singular, even if you have manager and employee, because you have the option, the or, either or, it becomes is. So you don't add together, like you say, for example, here, um, where you have the cat and the dog, are, because cat and dog together becomes plural. When you have either or, and you have singular, singular, it's always is, because it's only one, one person in the end. But just something to remember. Okay, guys, I really hope this has helped you. Um, remember, everything is available to check and to do the quiz again. You can go back, watch the video again, have your wish. But you won't be making these mistakes again. That's one thing for sure. See you later.